Yes. Me. I'm too short. You're too short. you got to sit on a phone book or something. It I wouldn't think be the first time I did that. That's pretty funny. All right. So you can raise your chair. Get your, uh, get your big stand up. Stand up. Stand up. Uh, uh, nope. Sorry. Okay. So one thing I forgot to mention is, um, okay, so these mics are the kind where if you notice you can't really hear me yeah. too well. So you if you're going to talk right to me, yeah, you just have to yeah, look yeah. at Mark like that. Yeah. Okay. okay. Got it. Yeah, good looking. <laughs> right. If I go like this, that means you gotta get a little bit closer. Oh, that's the secret code. Yeah, yeah. exactly. Okay. And, then when you and don't move the cords. Uh, yeah, exactly. Don't, <laughs> don't these things are very, very sensitive, thing. so okay. I won't touch anything. We just get set up where we are. Is that good? That's yeah, perfect. All right. Are you ready? Yeah. Well, just, you know, if you want to start that one at the same time so that we know what time it is. Ready? Go. Well, welcome. You're listening to The Best of Investing. I'm your host, Edward Brown. And Mark Hunt, my co-host, is not here today, but we have our special guest co-host, who's a regular uh, once a month, Mark Cooper of HL Commercial. And for those of you new to our show, imagine a few guys or gals sitting around a bar having drinks without the drinks, talking business with you, uh, the audience listening in. Our phone number is 888-912-1190. Use that number to answer the trivia questions for three gifts given away during this show. Now, those gifts are going to be tanning certificates by Tan Bella. Uh, two uh, locations in San Francisco and one in Marin. And the certificates are not sponsored by the radio station. Just to make a uh, make mention of that, the radio station wants to make sure that they're separated from the uh, gift plate. All right. Also, uh, don't forget to go on to our website, bestofinvesting.com, because we still have those paintball tickets at 85% off. Great gift uh, gifts for holidays and uh, birthdays. And today's trivia theme is just going to be miscellaneous trivia. You'll have to, we'll keep you in suspenders on that one. Uh, check out our website, bestofinvesting.com. Uh, we're also on television, Comcast Channel 26 and AT&T 99, uh, Saturdays at noon and Sundays at our new time, 3.30 p.m. Mark, you want to introduce our guest? Uh, I would love to introduce our guest here. So Kathleen Zemanski of Five Elements is a feng shui expert, and she's actually helped me in my own business and at my house. So, so Kathleen really knows her stuff for feng shui. She also has a very interesting date selection calendar. It's not just about where to put things, but when to do things. Kathleen Zemanski, well, welcome to The Best of Investing. Well, thank you, Edward and Mark, for having me on your show today. Very good. Okay, so um, let me just, actually, okay, so I'm going to just add a little bit to the bio here. Okay. Uh, so your date selection technology in the Time Blazer business management system, and you're also a radio show host of Illuminating Feng Shui. Did I pronounce that correctly? That is absolutely correct. Okay, good. Uh, on uh, Voice America uh, Business Channel, and you're also a best-selling co-author uh, in the anthology Come Out of Hiding and Shine. That's kind of cute. I like that. Yeah. All right. So you want to ask me the first yeah, question? Yeah, I had a couple questions for Kathleen. Can you define classical feng shui for us? Sure. You know, for your listeners, the thing that they want to uh, really hold on to, if you will, is there's several different schools of feng shui out there, several schools of feng shui that are kind of corny, okay. if you will. There's a lot of, you know, misconceptions about, about uh, feng shui. And what I practice is classical feng shui, which is going to mean that I am going to address person, space, and time. So I'm always going to look at how well a person fits into uh, space. I'm going to look at the compass direction. So I'm looking at direction okay. of a space. And I'm also going to look at timing. Timing is very important in, in well, all aspects yeah, of You know, interestingly enough, the first time I had ever heard of the term feng shui was uh -huh. probably about 20-something years ago when uh, we were involved in some kind of development. Uh -huh. And the builder was telling us, he says, yeah, I'm trying to sell this house. And this person brings this per other person, consultant, to sit on the land like for 24 hours to be able to see where the house is going to be and, you know, all this just to make sure that it was uh, feng shui. And I said, what's feng shui? And then they were trying to explain that. Well, actually, what that person was doing now, I don't know about this con the, the, the concept of a person sitting on a piece of land for 24 hours. I can't really yeah. speak to that because I haven't studied that. That's called a squatter. Yeah, yeah. it is. It's definitely <laughs> called a squatter. Good point. Yeah. But land form is, from how you're answering that question, is what we are trying to assess. There's a misconception of we're here in your studio and how do I feng shui the studio? What I'm actually looking for first is what's happening outside of your building. So we want to harness huh. the energy outside. So when you're doing a new construction, it's pivotally important to orient the building in the right direction so that you can capture the energy 
from outside, bring it in so you can use it. And that's not just the sun you're talking about, because I know nope. like Land a typical warm. house, you want to be facing south, right, to get a, a you would much think. sun. You would think, you okay. would think, but that's where it interfaces in with the person, and that's where I would bring in, you know, we there's a mis misnomer about astrology. We think that we're, you know, looking at like, okay, you know, what kind of relationship are you going to be in, and blah, blah, blah. Yeah. That's, that's kind of corny way of looking okay. at it. So how does your energy, the, the energy that you were born with, how is that going to affect the energy that's within that space? How, how do you know what energy I'm born with? Well, basically, I'm looking at your, your birth, which okay. is about your reputation. That's about your marketing. I do business. It's all about business for me. So it's about your marketing, business, reputation, your social circles, your month is about your career. Your day of birth is about you and your partnerships, well, okay. and your well, hour is well, remember, about your you, income. Well, it's like okay, so the you know the, the typical dating scene was you know hey baby, what's your sign? I yeah. should say slippery when wet. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Well, that's an, that's another that's, modality altogether. Okay, okay. But this is I I actually practice the five elements of Chinese astrology, which is what, water, air. It, nope, we yeah. don't use air, but we okay. use fire. Fire. Um, earth. Fire, earth, metal, water, and wood. So the wood element is the wind in some modalities, but in the Chinese five elements, we use the wood element. And those all have a connotation as well. Well, it is kind of interesting from a scientific standpoint. I mean, Absolutely. like metal, you know, some people have more metallic type of, you know, like, like, like as an example, if they have uh, certain mental issues, they treat it with lithium. Yeah. Right. You know, and so there's a lot of metal type stuff that goes in. Uh, so for us, you know. for us, if you have metal, which, by the way, coming up in 2017, because the energies are always shifting, okay. metal is is about money. So for you, for you, we want to find out, you know, who has money in their chart, right? So that's yeah. one of the what's one of the ways that we would look for wealth in a chart, but. It is also about systems. So how orderly a person is, we can kind of ascertain whether they have metal in their chart or not. But what if, when you're like interviewing a potential client, mm -hmm. do you ask them like what absolutely. month? Absolutely, absolutely. What month are you born? Well, I want to find out you're coming into money. Well, absolutely. Money. Well, you know what? People come to me for yeah. for number one thing. They come to me is for money. Show me the money. Sure. So feng shui originated back several thousand oh, yeah, years yeah, ago, sure. and it was about money and power. So when people think sure. that it's anything other than money and power, they're really not practicing feng shui. Interesting. Yeah. Well, that's kind of kind of neat to hear, you know, just because it's more, like, grounded, so yeah. to speak, rather than yeah. all this kind of weird stuff yeah. that's yeah. out there. As you anyway. can tell, I'm not the airy fairy kind no, of No, 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 I, I appreciate <laughs> that. Okay, hey, okay, we're going to, believe it or not, we have to get to our first commercial break here. All right, so our theme is just miscellaneous trivia. And if you know the answer, Kathleen, don't answer it yet. We'll wait till you, we come back from break, and then you can answer it. Here's our first trivia question. According to doctors, that is almost a fun question, Kathleen. According to doctors, people with what kind of pets fall asleep the easiest? Ooh, right, that's our ooh. question. All right, don't answer yet. Okay, the first uh, caller with the correct answer is going to win a free uh, Tan Bella certificate, which is good at uh, any of their Tan Bella uh, salons, and it's good for three tanning services. Call 888-912-1190. That's 888-912-1190 to answer that question. And we're actually going to allow the first three callers on this one, all right? Uh, so make sure to include your name and your email address and speak slowly and spell out your email one letter at a time. And again, the question is, according to doctors, people with what kind of pets fall asleep the easiest? Don't touch that dial. The best of investing will be right back. Okay. Okay, my volume is huge. How do I turn this oh. thing? I know. Um, <laughs> we're going to need, like, okay, hearing aids. Wait, wait, wait. Yours fall? Oh, well, I can because that, okay. Oh, well, now it's crackling. Let's see. Okay, yeah, I, you know what? There was something wrong with Mark's. With, with those, you couldn't hear, so you so. cranked it up. Yeah. No, if you yeah, crank I, it up, it doesn't it. crackle. Yeah, but the most okay. important thing is the mic. The, because the mic's, I mean, hey, the, the mic's, mic's good. Fine. I was just yeah. getting so much volume that I yeah. was getting blown off. Sorry, the can, can I turn mine down just a touch? Keep, keep talking. I, okay. Is that good? Uh, yeah. Okay. Thank you. So I have got a good skeptic story, and I think that that's good because it'll yes. kind of dispel some of the, yes, I mean, please. I, I had some questions that I was like, wait a second. So I think it, yeah. that's kind of an interesting part of it because yes, you it don't is. want to just get 
all of this. You want right. to hear the layman's skepticism. Yeah, absolutely. absolutely. And you, you have something coming up, a special event, too. We're not recording, but I think at some point I want to ask you about that. So we'll get that okay. going on the thing. Yeah, I mean, uh, people get, like, my, my wife is very uh, in tune. I mean, God's given her a gift of when she, she has dreams. And they'll be regular dreams sometimes, uh -huh. and then they'll be prophetic dreams. Uh -huh. And when she said, no, this is a prophetic dream, I learned to kind of really listen like that. Because the kind of stuff I could give you stories oh, like a of. Prophecy, like, yeah. like, yeah. like, 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 oh, I kind of got to, I, I got to pray for my brother right now. And then it's like two in the morning. And then we, we, she calls me the next day and says, can you tell me about what happened to your day? And she tells about it. It gives me chills. I don't oh, know. I'm dude. talking serious uh, stuff. Really right. serious Witch. stuff. Witch. Witch. No, 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 Probably has in her chart a lot of metal and water. She's a Scorpio. Does that help? She so, has a pro well. Scorpio maybe, yeah, would be more in the water, water sign, but I'm, I do again. I do uh, Chinese astrology, not Western okay. astrology, but that would fall into play there. Yeah, I mean, she's had stuff where I mean, I wouldn't be surprised if she's been in so in tune. I mean, because there's been situations where there's been you know, if you don't believe in angels or something, mm -hmm. you would believe in angels after you after you story. listen to her. Like yeah. somebody, they'll tell you a Santa Claus story, and it's like I know yeah. he's still there. <laughs> I mean, even, even I get a little skeptical and stuff, but then when I hear the stories, and then I live the stories, and I, yeah. uh, that's why I really, I mean, I'm, a, I'm, I'm an accountant by trade, yeah, yeah, yeah. you know, and no, with I a tax it. degree, I'm as it. logical as one can get, <laughs> yeah, right? right? I and then you're yet even I can kind of go, okay, this goes beyond logic. Yeah. <laughs> creepy, you know? Yeah. yeah. But creepy in a good way, because it's not yeah. like she's, she's, you yeah. know, casting no. spells on people. Yeah. No, it's not that stuff. It's just like, like, like this is this is what's going on right now. Uh -huh. Yeah, in fact, she had this, she, just really quickly, and I tell you, this is a really quick story. <laughs> so, you can't do this on live radio. Yeah, I was, so I was going through this um, uh, very kind of serious business situation, and one day she just, she just woke up the next day, you know, in the morning she said, she goes, Edward, I had this dream, she goes, oh, this prophetic dream, so I'm like, what is it? She goes, the guy who you're meeting with, uh, you know, in the next few days, it's, he opened up this treasure chest. And he just let you choose whatever you wanted. Hmm. Well, that sounds like a pretty good one, right? Yeah. Well, I go to the meeting, and it was originally going to be a contentious meeting, yeah. right? And he it got to a point. I mean, this is this is a five hundred million dollar REIT, okay? And I had raised a lot of money for them, and then they started to go down. Yeah. And I said, listen, we got to buy. I got to buy out hundreds of people who are invested in this thing, and they're not happy. What are you going to do? Yeah. He goes, well, listen, I can't, you know, legally, I can't buy you guys out. The SEC will tar and feather me. He says, but I tell you what. He says, I've got this treasure chest now. <laughs> he says, i got a list of these deeds of trust. You pick whatever ones you want. Now, you have to buy them. But, right? Yeah, yeah but suddenly, a Yeah, but, but uh, he was giving it to me at a discount. Yeah. Right. And and that's what started my career in Whoa. the hard money loan business. And wow. I did very, very well because. Nice. Yeah. So there's stuff like that. I got yeah. a few more stories that I, we won't get into now, but just so you know, that's some of the stuff is real. <laughs> yeah. Okay. So got that. Is, what do you think I'm doing this for? <laughs> yeah, yeah, exactly. Um, Notice the treasure chest. The treasure. Yeah, that's right. My sister said that. Okay. Um, so why don't I ask you the second question, which is so like why would someone use feng shui? Yeah. 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 Go. Okay. Cool. Yeah. All right. Before we do, well, we answer the question, then I do have a, a little announcement. Are you, are you going to tell what the what the doctor said? Yeah, yeah, that's what oh, okay. I answer the question. Oh, yeah. Right, right. Yeah, right. <laughs> and then we do we jump in first or after? Yeah, we. Well, I'll ask the question, see if you know the answer, okay. <clears throat> and then I'll I'll do this. And I'll back so back. tempting to look at that piece of paper. Yeah, don't do it. Don't do it. <laughs> I know. I got it. Okay, here we go. Welcome back to The Best of Investing. I'm Edward Brown, your host, along with my co-host, Mark Cooper of HL Commercial. Again, Mark Funk is off today, and our special guest, Kathleen Zemanski. Now, our first trivia question was, according to doctors, people with what kind of pets fall asleep the easiest? The answer, who knows uh, the answer? Well, well since, you, since you threw a feng shui angle in there, it's got to be a dog. Okay, I'm going with snake. Fish. Ooh, I was what? close, I think. Close. <laughs> we have snakes eat the fish. Yeah, okay. okay what, is, what does that have to do with fire? Oh, I get oh, it. Yeah, 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 yeah. I guess so. All right. Yeah. Okay, and before we get back to Kathleen, I just want to make a quick announcement here. Um, this is going to be for the uh, Cityscape Viewing Lounge at the Hilton San Francisco Union Square. If you've never been there before, check it out. 360-degree views 
once you get to the top uh, with the cityscape viewing lounge, you can see AT&T Park on one side and go to the other side of the building and you see the Golden Gate Bridge. It is spectacular and the food is fantastic. Check them out at the Hilton San Francisco Union Square. So we have Kathleen Zabanski here who's going to teach us a little bit about feng shui. I like saying that, feng shui. <laughs> so a uh, question for you is why would someone use feng shui in today's world? Well, you know, to me it's like a, a question of why wouldn't you use it. And because to me there is so much logic behind the reason why you would want to use it. You could easily tap into once you know where the most vibrant areas of a space is. Why wouldn't you use that over, you know, I can go into space after space and, some, it, and it can be beautiful, mm -hmm. which is not feng shui, by the way. Um, and someone can say, gosh, it just doesn't feel right. And then yeah. I can change the angle of their computer and then all of a sudden things start to flow. So it really is just a matter of getting into least resistance with whatever your daily uh, work flow is, why not work with the flow of the universe versus against it? So well, is some of it kind of, the, like the, I, when I think of feng shui for an office, I think, you know, you walk into someone's uh, door, you know, there's the idea that you're not supposed to be facing away from them. You know, I've heard of stuff like that. And I don't know if that's necessarily feng shui or just common courtesy, <laughs> you know, have your back to somebody. Well, there there is something to be said about not having your back to a door or something of that nature because when you think about it well, every, sneak, sneak up well it. it's more about well, I wouldn't I wouldn't worry so much about the sneaking up okay. part of it but every time you have to skew your body to look at behind you you're yeah. you're looking at repetitive injury although that's not oh, really okay. a feng shui oh, thing okay. it really is a, it, it's more of a you know common sense okay. thing yeah. but when i'm looking at placement of someone's desk i'm always looking at what i call their personal power directions again based on your birth information your birth year specifically and your um, gender and then that's going to give you um, some free you know that's going to give you the the four directions that are good for you and so you would I'm want to be in the most vibrant one then you you just kind of take your smartphone and figure out what that is and huh. yeah so if i were born january 45th that's good 45th. <laughs> okay, no, you know no. what? If you were born January 45th, I would love to see that birth chart. But um, can I can I offer a free gift to your listeners? Sure. Okay. Go to um, www.freebusinessastrology.com. Put in your birth information, and then when you download your chart on a break, we're going to pull up your chart, and then I'm going to help you make sure that you're in a good direction. But go to the bottom of the chart, and it's going to say personal power directions. There's going to be four good directions and there's going to be four challenging. So at this we point, ideally want to get you in one of those good four directions. So looking at, so you can't just look at the situation right now and, and tell me whether or not it's good. You personally for you? No, I can't personally gotcha. for you because until I have your personal information, I, you know. I have my social yeah. security number. I yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> well, I'll get that after. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> Go ahead, Mark. Okay, well, I was going to say I was a skeptic. I really was. And my first question for Kathleen was, do I have to believe in this for it to work for me? Or can I just have you come down? I'm skeptical. Okay. And I believe, the. what was the answer to that? Do I have to believe in feng shui for it to work? Absolutely not. Because okay. feng shui is going to be there available for each and every person. And it's your choice on whether you want to tap into it or not. Now, I had a very good friend of mine say to me, and I think this is the best analogy of all. Gravity, it's like gravity. It's going to happen exactly. whether you yeah. whether you believe it or not. You, you take the apple from the tree, it's going to drop if you don't have something underneath yeah. it to catch it. It's going to happen. It's the same with feng shui. The energy is there whether you choose to tap into the vibrant parts of it or not. That's your choice. Yeah. So I had Kathleen come to my office in San Rafael, and we were remodeling. And she was able to come in with a big compass, looked at my chart, my birth date, and help me orient not only my desk, my computer monitor, my printer, but where my de my guests will sit in my office mm -hmm. for them to be most prosperous. So I have a couple of chairs. My boss will come in to sit down, and I, I put him in the chair where I know I'm going to get the raise, essentially. Yeah, or, exactly. Or however, however else that Actually, works. Actually, that's a good selling tool. Say, hey, listen, if you come to my office, I'll, I'll put you yeah. in such a way that you Well, we have a couch, too. There's two spots on the couch, and the one spot is more powerful and more prosperous than the other. 
So we had another thing where she came in with a big compass. I mean, it's like the size of a frisbee, literally. It's a huge compass. She spends about 20 minutes. She goes around, does all this stuff. She comes up to my monitor and literally moves it like a sixteenth of an inch on its axis, and then she steps back and goes, "All right." And I'm like, "What? what? <laughs> that was it?" And just to to orient the front surface, the plane of the glass of your monitor, yeah. huh. to get that in the right alignment, uh -huh. because a little bit of a rotation one way or another can make a huge difference. It has nothing to do with your eyes getting all weirded out because of. Uh, yeah. And we we huh. moved out of my office. We remodeled. I came back in. I set up my computer. I plugged in my monitor. I checked my email. Yep. The very first email to come through was an all cash, full price <laughs> offer on a building that I was looking to sell here in Marin County. And it's like if that doesn't convert me you to feng shui, that, yeah. I don't know what will. So, so I don't care. If, I don't. It doesn't matter if you believe or so not. It's, it's working. Like. like Practically the most successful. Uh, no, no. I, brought, I would probably say no, one of my most premium clients, and it would be Benina's Confidential, of I course. work with an international financial institution, and they have a very, very large office in the city. And they had me come in when they were taking over a very large space in, in the Bank of America building, we'll put it that way. And it was down to the studs. So they were taking over the space. And what the um, issue was for me was to lay out the offices. And I'm working with pretty big architectural firms and contractors and property management people. So I'm working as part of a team. But my task is one to, once I looked at the floor plans, was choosing the senior executive offices yeah. So if you know they had the junior execs and then the seniors, where was the most vibrant energy to place them? And we're also looking like long term, short term. So the long term is where you're always building and buying, and short term is if you want quick action. Well, it's kind of funny. You can imagine, you know, the, the CEO is kind of going, "Man, this better be like the top floor, best corner office." And you make up, "Well, no, it's actually in the basement. <laughs> it's the broom closet." <laughs> well, yeah. Yeah. well, you know the. The, the proof is in the pudding on that particular one because uh, it, just last year they took over another very large chunk. Now they have about three quarters of one floor of the Bank of America building, and they called me back. So something Boy, must be working. I hope that you don't get in big arguments with the architects and, and designers when they have to do Typ their thing. Typically, I don't. Oh, that's, 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 not, right. that's not working with the team. All right, th Kathleen, stay with us because we're obviously going to want to get out your information to look for interesting things. We have a couple more questions for you. I really want to talk about some of the good stuff. All right, here's our second trivia question. Uh, actually, before we do that, we want to also make a quick mention. Come aboard, come aboard, come aboard the Hornblower uh, Cruises. One of a kind experience. You guys ever been on the Hornblower? I have. It's awesome. Very awesome. And the food is good, and they have dancing, and good, usually pretty good bands, too. So check them out at hornblower.com. Uh, they have some good uh, uh, Christmas um, uh, cruises going on, too. All right, just second trivia question. We're talking miscellaneous trivia here. A healthy person does what about 16 times per day? I'll give you a hint. It's more than blink. Okay? All right. Don't touch that dial. They, I will actually hear because we get the phone number out. 888 912 1190. And again, we're going to give out three certificates uh, for this. The first three callers with the correct answer are going to win this free hand dollar certificate. Call 888 888- 912-1190 to answer that question. A healthy person does what about 16 times a day? Don't touch that dial. The best of investing will be right back. Okay. Okay, good. At some point, we got to get some hard money. Uh, uh, well, exactly. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, it, it, this is interesting. We could do a whole bunch, but we have to do so much time. To yeah, I think at some point, I was going to talk about the uh, when they missed the deadline. Yes. And also, uh, I'm curious about the date selection, but I the, the time of day select because that could spiral into your deadline thing. <laughs> because yeah, we were talking about the time, but I think we've got, we've got to talk about a little bit of financing. But this yeah, is yeah. fascinating. It, you know, it is. It's, it's definitely. Well, thank you. Great thank guess. you for so, having so me. So when you have a it's grand, fun. I see when I see like a master and grandmaster, I keep thinking, you know, the chess player. Yeah. Uh, well, no, I, I think of you. You say, ah, oh, grasshopper, <laughs> <laughs> or weed hopper. <laughs> Now, you have an event coming up. Are you, are you going to tell us that about that at all? Is that yeah, if you, if you want to plug it, we can, yeah. we can talk about yeah. it. Because yeah. we can always come back if we have more time to, to more of these questions. And, and definitely yeah. stick around to yeah, get yeah. what we're I'll talking I'd be sitting yeah. in traffic. Believe me, there yeah. is a truck that is on top of the Median center divide. What, what is it with people about not... 
realizing that the faster they go, the worse it gets. But, you know. But how in the heck could a truck be half on south and I see. I actually saw that the same thing right uh, between San Pedro, Egypt, like San Pedro, San Pedro and, and Lincoln, Lincoln Avenue. Yeah. That was months ago in not the oh, rain, really? and it was going northbound, and some it was a car, not a truck, and it was it was up on the uh, right on the median. Uh, Where the well, how could like, that happen? It's not even like that? a curve, big curve or anything. I no. It must have hit something. Well, it, and, you know, it's raining, and people are like driving stupid, yeah. crazy. But, but I mean, the, the, the weather, it was the weather was perfect, right? Yeah. So. It, Okay, you ready? Here we go. Well, welcome back to the best of investing. Edward Brown here along with Mark Hahn. Uh, Mark Hahn. See, Mark, I, too many Marks around here. Mark Hahn is off. We have Mark Cooper from HL Commercial and our special guest, Kathleen Camille. So here was our second trivia question. A healthy person does what about 16 times per day? What's the answer? I'm going to say stand up. I'm going to go with uh, drink fluids. No, it's, I'll, and I'll put it politically correct. Flossing. They fluff or pass gas. Oh, yes. Of course. So, and that's healthy. So I, I almost know. said that actually. You thought it was just as PG rating. That was not even my first thought. Fluffing, you know, like when you fluffing, say, I'm going to go with my gut, that was, a, that, <laughs> yeah, was my gut. that was not when I. Uh, I so, as my that. wife would say, I must be very healthy. Okay. Um, <laughs> <laughs> all right. So, Kathleen, um, since we're going to have to move on to other things, uh, Mark said you, you have some kind of a, um event coming up, and then you want to. In case people have questions they want to ask you before we get hold of you. Sure. Well, my event that I have every year, I do the annual predictions because we have a, a big shift in energy around February 4th. So, you know, mid January, which is January 14th this year, I'm going to do my full day of uh, fire rooster feng shui and astrology talk. So it's a full day of finding out what's going to happen in your chart, what's going to happen in your space, and then I'm also going to give some good dates so people can like to turn on that fire rooster and shine. Which is kind of interesting with the astrology chart, because mm -hmm. I learned this, I don't know, months ago. If you look at the astrology chart, there's 12 animals. That's right. Theoretically, 11 of them are real and one is fictional. The dragon. Speaking of dragon. Yeah. Very good. But, but the dragon, actually, the word dinosaur only was invented in the 1800s, mm -hmm. right? Meaning terrible lizard. Mm -hmm. What was it called before that? Yeah. A dragon. Yeah. So it's actually, a dragon really did live. They just, you know, called know. They, that's what they now call them. Now there's a trivia question. I was going to say yeah. there's a trivia question. question. You, should, you should, like, pull that one in next week to see if anybody's listening. Listen, six, year, six years of high school gets you far. <laughs> okay. So, uh, Mark, now you are the uh, commercial broker extraordinaire. Well, we've been on fire this year, and we just closed our eighth sale. Uh, which is great. That's amazing. Um, so I work with a lot of investors, and uh, I, we had a question. Yeah, so we did We did get a question from a listener, because they knew that you're here, that someday you're going to be on the show. So, you know, hey, when you get that commercial guy back, ask him this question. What do you do when a buyer or a seller misses a contract deadline? Ooh, another stumper. Well, um, so this is like that old joke, am I buying or selling, is the punchline. Um, so one situation here is if you're a seller, and the buyer has missed the deadline, typically what we do in the contract, and I prefer the CAR, California Association of Realtors contract, there is a notice to perform clause, which means like, hey, I've got the right to cancel this contract, but you've got three days to make good. Uh, typical deadlines that are missed would be either proof of funds, uh, inspection deadline, a loan approval, something like that. The seller has the right to give them a notice to perform that says you've got three days typically to do what you said you were going to do, but the seller's recourse is to cancel the contract. Yeah, because if someone misses a deadline, can you just automatically cancel? If no, well, it depends how the contract's written, but we usually will have an, a, a notice to perform clause which says that if, if uh, the buyer or seller misses that deadline, yeah. the other party will give them a notice that says, hey, you got three days or I have the right to cancel which, this contract. Which, which is fair because there, there might be some unforeseen and, and I, I can't imagine too many judges, if, if it gets to that, which happens a lot, where they say, oh, come on. You know what? If you would have given them a couple of days, it's like, you know what? A it, contract is a contract, yeah, Edward. Except that, wait a minute, though, in a lease, if you, um, let's say the lease says you have to have insurance. Well, if your insurance lapses, usually the, the landlord can't just cancel it. Even because, though it's a, now you're it's in breach it. of the lease, right? Exactly. Of but they, they, there's a, a time to perform. 
And that's, uh, that's I guess what I'm Well, getting. and another thing that we, we talk about is liquidated damages, and that's yeah. something I like to put into contracts, which means that the actual amount of money that is on or on deposit with escrow yeah. is the damages that the seller would receive in the event that the buyer removes all their contingencies and they decide to not buy the property. Okay. Now, the other thing would be is what happens if the seller has missed a deadline? You know, buyer made their deposit, buyer's got the loan, everything is good, but then all of a sudden the seller doesn't give access to the property or oh, they, yeah. you know, they're... You know, or if it's a condo association, they didn't give them the rules and regulations. So oh. like, seller doesn't show up at escrow to sign the closing docs. There you go. There you go. Beautiful one. I heard one actually where a guy was kidnapped and the buyer was never found in the middle of the escrow. The, the buyer of the property was kidnapped. And uh, I said, what happened to the deal? And the guy, guy disappeared. Couldn't buy the property. Wow. Uh, but in this case, we were talking about uh, uh, buyer's recourse is specific performance, which is forcing the seller to sell or to recover damages. We like the liquidated damages clause, but the answer to that question, of course, is to notice to perform by either party with the adequate amount of days and then either uh, specific performance. Um, but a seller's recourse is typically to cancel the contract, and that's not what they want to do. They want to sell that property. So it's really a challenge. Unless it's gone way up in value, and because uh, that actually happened to me where I was in contract uh, to sell a building, and the buyer was a little squirrely. And he was trying to get me to lower the price, lower the price, and then he tied me up. And you know, and, and he said, "We're going to go to arbitration." And all well, all these months were passing, but it was at a time when real estate was going way up in value. And it came to a point where I told my realtor, "I said, you know what? I'm not very happy with this buyer. <laughs> not only, not only am I going to like not force him to buy it. In fact, if he wants to close tomorrow, I'm not going to let him buy it." And and that's what happened. I kept, and I retained the building. And you still own it to this day? I still own it to this day. Good for you. And I'm very happy yeah. I did. Yeah. It cost me a little bit of money. Little bit of money. <laughs> <laughs> no, but the net result was I'm happy, and I'm sure that buyer, that would be buyer, he not so happy. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so now, Mark, you work for HL Commercial. Right, so my office is here in San Rafael. I primarily do uh, investment properties in Marin and Sonoma County. My cell phone is 415 608 1036, and my email is mark, M A R K at hlcre.com. Yeah, exactly. And yeah. then I got to say that, uh, you know, I, I go to a mortgage broker's meeting uh, once a month, and uh, Mark is like, he's kind of like the, the um, I don't know, not, not the MC, but he, he's the... Uh, Those are my initials, by the way. <laughs> yeah, that's true. That, that's I am the Mark. MC. Yes, you are <laughs> the MC. No, but I'd say that uh, he's the, I, the most popular, so to speak, because he's always got something to say in a good way, you know, the sale, uh, lease, you know, a lot of guys go there and they just say, yeah, my name's Joe Blow, here's my phone number. But Mark is quite a uh, busy beaver. So we try to add some color and fun. Yeah, no, 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 but, it, but I, I guess what I'm getting at is from a professional standpoint, uh, you are a go-getter, which is why I asked him out of, like, what's it, and you say, what, guys, 80, 80, yeah, 80 right. people, I go, this is the guy I want on the show. All right, you know what? We believe that we have to go to another break. Uh, when we come back, now, Mark Hunt is not with us, but he gave me some notes to talk about uh, Pacific Private Money and what they're doing and how they're still producing over uh, 7.5% to 8% yield net to the investors with uh, no conservative. Okay, all right, here we go. Here's our third trivia question. What did Einstein call the most difficult thing to First three callers with the correct answer are going to win a uh, free certificate to Candela um, for free canning services. Call 888-912-1190. That's 888-912-1190 to answer this question. What did Einstein call the most difficult thing to understand? Again, don't touch that dial because the best of investing is going to be right back. Blue. Blue. It's going to be. <laughs> the live show must be fun. Do you ever uh, a little tongue twister on the of live? Of course. Oh, of course. Yeah. Of course yeah. We used to do and, live. And you, and it was fun. You just keep, you just roll. You just roll it just, yeah. Yeah. It's yeah. funny because when we did live, sometimes you get callers calling in. Yeah. And, you know, sometimes. Is, was there a delay or anything? Or they could just say uh, whatever they uh, There was like a, <laughs> no, there was a three second delay. Oh, no, yeah. It was only three seconds. And I had, I had a separate person outside the glass yeah, who, would, who could do stuff. But I also yeah. could have a dump. Yeah. Dump, right? Yeah. And sometimes what happens is... I have an engineer that will dump, but... <laughs> yeah. But they, uh, sometimes you know, people, they come on and, well, I've got 
no, no. two questions. And it's like, you I know what? I guess yeah, hey, I you know what? You're cutting down on it, and we got to get out of here. That connection, right? Yeah. Exactly. <laughs> Jeez. Because, you, again, you can't have listeners. I, I don't have a lot of callers come in, call in, but when they do, every every caller that I've had call in, with the exception of you, ha, has been like. <laughs> Even your yeah, husband. Uh, <laughs> I'm like. Say the question that I ask you to ask me. Well, yeah. I'm doing this and I'm doing yeah, that. Here's yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> some some years back, and, and again, the name Edward Brown, I guess, is a little popular, probably almost as much as Mark Cooper. Um, and uh, there, there apparently is an Edward, there's an Edward Brown Spirit Rock who teaches mm. uh, classes. So this guy calls up, and goes, just like this. You know, Oh, is this Edward Brown? Yeah. I go, yeah. He goes, oh, man. He was like, he heard you last night. You were just awesome. Oh, so spirit. Like, he's talking like this, right? And I said, uh, well, you, after he's done, I said, I said, well, actually, I said, uh, you've got the wrong Edward Brown. Said, you need to turn your life over to Jesus Christ. And I'm just, no. <laughs> right? He's all, oh, I think I got the wrong number. His oh, voice just completely oh, changed. Was it was him. Funny. Funny. Jeez. What I go, man, what happened? Oh, that's gone. <laughs> <laughs> oh, it's too that's funny. So where are we on the timeline? Here? Okay, is this, so we is have this a nine nineteen. Okay. Yeah. Yeah, I've been lagging on this okay. thing here. Yeah, that's okay. okay. Ready? Yeah. Nine nineteen. Nope. Well, welcome back to the best friend, best thing, Edward Brown here, along with Mark Cooper. Mark Hunt is off today. Last trivia question: What did Einstein call the most difficult thing to understand? I got this one: tying a shoe, or how tying a shoe works. Really? No. <laughs> How many mortgage brokers and investors did it take to yeah. really yeah. like that? Yeah. yeah. No, income taxes. Oh. He said that's the most difficult. I thought it was going to be like uh, compound interest. I think that's the uh, thing. Ben that Franklin. Said oh, was Ben Franklin said that? I got the wrong. I don't know. I don't know. All right. <laughs> that was a okay, so Mark's not here today. Um, we did have a question that did come in to him. Uh, it says uh, to all answers because I know the answer. It says, I understand your fund is income oriented, uh, but do you have anything for the growth investor? So Mark is president of Pacific Private Money, one of California's fastest growing mortgage investment firms. And he's got a fund. And his fund uh, is raising money. It's only got about 22, 23 million dollars in it, which is kind of low for you know some of these big funds. And he's currently paying almost eight um, percent on an annualized basis. And uh, the loan to value average in the fund is only about 55%, which is very, very conservative. And so there, the question comes in about uh, that it's income oriented because it's paying monthly distribution. But if somebody wanted to be a quote growth investor, what they could do is just like a mutual fund, you could let it accumulate and compound the interest. Reinvest the fund. Reinvest the, yeah. reinvest the distribution. So that's effectively like a growth. I mean, it's not going to be like, you know, super growth potential like a, a tangible stock market, but the uh, yield will grow an extra, you know, maybe three eighths to half a point. So, you know, an 8% yield, you let it sit there compounding, it'd be close to 8.35 to 8.5%. So um, if you got to uh, call Pacific Private Money at 415 883 2150, and uh, I've seen some of the deals that he's been doing lately, and it's pretty amazing how there are borrowers. You know, you, you wonder, you know, how can you pay investors at eight percent? Well, he's doing loans at ten percent, plus he's charging some points. You know, right? they're nine point something, you know, nine point nine percent plus points. You go, well, who's borrowing that? Well, it's not people who are in distress, like you know, well, gee, if you don't give me the money, I'm gonna file bankruptcy. It's people who say, listen, I've got an eight hundred FICO score, and I. I Everything was going very well. I was ready to buy this house. And then at the last minute, the bank said, oh, oops, we just realized you've only worked there for 18 months instead of two years. And even though the guy makes a million dollars a year, they still said, oh, sorry, it's only been 18 months. I mean, you get stuff like that. Or you get stuff like an incorrect income tax lien. Or somebody who just changed jobs because of a, or got divorced or something. There's always these little silly reasons but there's so much equity in a property, which is, again, why the average loan to value is only 55%. So out of the roughly 1,200 loans that he's done, he's only had less than 12 go into foreclosure. And of those 12, 10 of them paid off by the time it was ready to you know, go to sale with penalties and interest and all that. So that was, that was, was a bonus. And the other two 
That was the best thing that ever happened was the foreclosure because they got took the property back. They took the property <laughs> and there was a lot of equity in it. So again, uh, to learn more about Pacific Private Money and the fund that they have, you should call Mark Hans at 415-883-2150. And if he doesn't answer, just leave a message for him and uh, ask more about the Pacific Private Money Fund. All right, so we have a few minutes left here. Um, oh, I was going to ask another question yeah. to Kathleen here. Um, now, one thing you were talking about was the uh, date selection. Now, uh, Feng Shui, I understand, is organizing your space and making things, but, but you can actually tell me a date when I should buy a house or pop the question if I want to get married or Absolutely. something. Absolutely. Absolutely. So, again, I, I look at person, space, and time. I'm always looking at the five elements. So it is um, a, an alignment with, again, you, the person. Um, I'm looking at your chart and any specific day that you would be, and it, I would need the motive as well. Like, am I popping the, the question? <laughs> oh, am okay. I popping the question? Am I signing a contract? Am I bringing on a new partner into my business? Am I letting a partner grow? Because each day has a different vibration, and even though it's a, a good day, is it good for you? So that's the thing that you really want to find out when you're using, and you use this for milestone things. I, I think it gets a little bit into the superstition zone where you can't do anything without control. And that's ridiculous. I mean, you know, life goes on. Yep. But when, you're use, when, you're, when you have something big in your life and you want it to go in a more favorable flow, then use timing. Um, yeah, like your time. wedding day. Or, yeah, yeah, absolutely. Okay. And absolutely. How how does somebody go to school for this? Or, you know, how do you, how do you, how do you learn that stuff? Well, I've actually tried. Most of my study is outside of the United States oh, because nice. the because I do practice classical feng shui. So where I am learning from mostly is Malaysia. I've, I've gone to China, Tibet, um, uh, India, you know, in Europe because the level that I practice is not really even offered in the United States. So huh. which means I. You know, one of the few that do practice. At but I wonder level. how, like, it started. You know, like I, as I understand it, and I don't know if this is just legend, but uh -huh. um, like acupuncture. What I had heard, and again, uh -huh. don't don't quote me on this, but this is what I heard uh -huh. that <laughs> that the way that it actually got started was, you know, thousands of years ago, an arrow hit somebody, and it didn't kill him, and suddenly he kind of looked and said, well, for some reason, I don't feel pain on other parts of my body, and yet the arrow was there. Okay, that you know was I mean? a very tiny arrow. It must have been a very <laughs> tiny arrow, yeah. But I, I just thought, well, that's kind of interesting. I mean, it, it kind of makes sense. It's a little weird, but it makes sense. And, you know, and so, I mean, well, ac acupuncture and feng shui actually follow the same system. It's five elements, chi flow, energy flow, and all of that. But back in antiquity, when feng shui all came about, again, it was looking at the land form. It was actually a very dangerous occupation because a feng shui master would have to scale that mountain that was, you know, so many hundreds of miles away to figure out what the energy of the land was. But how would he figure it out? You know what I mean? It's like... Well, you're looking at... This is a very deep subject, and again, okay. I, and to give it justice, I don't know if I can do it in 30 seconds or okay. less, but... It is having the capacity. Your observation skills need to be very, very keen. Okay. What we are basically looking for, and this is a tip that your all of your listeners can do right now, embrace. Just think of an embrace. So you want to have something strong behind you, like a mountain energy behind you, okay. and you want to have a nice opening in front of you. Okay. So think of your buildings. Even in a cityscape, we have... Um, other buildings even behind us, if you will, yeah. but your front entrance should be large enough to let the energy come in, so it should be unobstructed, and you should have a, a more flat opening that will embrace the energy to come in, because imagine if you had um, a mountain in front of you. Yeah. It's blocking the blocking, energy. Sure. So you want to be able to let the the good energy come so in from the front. So it's not so much even the aesthetics. I mean, because Absolutely not no, the aesthetics. But, but the funny thing is, like if I'm walking into a building and suddenly there's a huge thing in the way, it is going to make me feel very uncomfortable. I'm not going to want to be in that building versus exactly. walking into something very open. But that's more of a an aesthetic type of feeling, isn't it? Or is well, that the energy if, it's, if it's blocking, it's blocking. So, But they also equate... 
or, or don't don't use the, you know, when somebody says, and I hear this all the time, it's like, oh, I do my own feng shui. And I was like, okay, I've been studying this now okay. for 17 years. And, the, and and you can pick up a magazine and do it. But they're, what they're talking about is aesthetics. And to me, I always say, just just think that when you're, um, if you've fallen in love with this beautiful woman or this very handsome guy, that they're very, very toxic for you. Okay. So beauty does not equate good energy. It may make yeah, you, you point. know, you're aesthetically, oh, it's pleasing on the eye, but it can be very damaging to the heart and soul. I think <laughs> that space. applies to real estate as well. Just because it's a good looking building doesn't mean you should buy it. Yeah, so, that's right. a good point. Right? Like, there are definitely times <laughs> where it's mean, like you can walk into a building and go, yeah, there's something weird about it. Like, well, here, there, there's a building not too far from here, and it feels really weird. And you go, there's something bad about this building. And then it turned out that it was owned by Satan. So you just wow. kind of wonder, you go, gee, is that is that a coinky dink? Nope. Okay, all right, stay with us. We're, we're, when the Best of Investing comes back, we're going to have some closing comments. We're also going to have some thoughts for the day and kind of wrap this big puppy up. All right, don't touch that dial. The Best of Investing will be right back. All right. All right. Would I be able to mention my yes. my URL and name? Okay. Yeah. Oh, yeah, we're we're it's all about the plugging. <laughs> it's all about the plugging. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, yeah. So. Let's see. So we got the uh, most of the stuff, the date and time. And we didn't get into time too much, but I think we're good. What are three things a person can do to improve their feng shui? Yeah. These are almost trivia questions here. <laughs> so we're, uh, we got 510 when we come back. Is Correct. It? Yeah, okay. No. Pretty fun. Little show. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> uh, last one we did, Rob Spinoza was the mortgage guy. Oh, fun. Yeah. Yeah, he's got a lot to say, too. Yeah. Yeah. He's got some so. laugh. Yeah, he's got the deep voice. And, uh, yeah, he does have an interesting voice. Yeah. Good bad mortgage broker, too. Yeah. Oh, yeah, you can tell he's going to get the job done. Yeah, he can be done. With, okay, so 510 is what we're looking at. So what we want to do is around four minutes. We'll stop because I've got some time to wrap up. Are we ready? Yeah. Welcome back to the Best of Investing. Last time for today, I'm Edward Brown, your host, along with Mark. Cooper, as Mark Fox is off today, and our special guest, Kathleen Spinozzi. Now, Kathleen, before we uh, leave for the day, we want to make sure that people have your um, website and phone number in case they want to uh, get some tips on feng shui. Sure. Um, well, my, if you want to reach out to me personally, you can uh, reach me at Kathleen, that's Kathleen with a K at 5elementsgroup.com, and that's numeral 5elements, plural, group.com. Um, if you're interested in that event, go to www.5elementsgroup.com forward slash events, and then just click on the information there. And then if you want to call me, um, although I'm, I'm heading out of town, but it may go to voicemail uh, until uh, close to the first of the year, but you can reach me at 415-690-9839, and I'd love to hear from you. All right, yeah. I think, oh, I got one other question for you, Kathleen. Mm. What are three things a person can do to improve their feng shui? Okay, the first thing, and again, I do business feng shui, but this can apply for a home as well. And I alluded to it a little bit when we, when I was talking about, you know, the ancient sages. So basically, what you want to think about when you're looking at your space, go outside, and this is without, you know, just stand at your front door. Let's let's start there. Stand at your front door. Look in front of you, behind you, right to left, and just make sure that there are no obstructions coming to your front door. One. Two, um, your front entrance is such an important part of your um, financial standing, if you will, because the front of the building is about your finances. So I would also have you make sure that the, the immediate inside of your building, your front entryway, is have it um, as clutter-free as possible, although we're not really talking about professional organizing, but you do want to have it unobstructed. Think of the Ritz, um, how beautiful their front entry is. So you want to have that kind of a feel when you're walking in the building. And then in the back of the building, this is about people matters, relationships, and health. So the back of your building, whether you own it, own it or lease it, you want that in, in order as well. So no dead plants. You don't want broken pipes, um, you know, a lot of garbage back yeah, now there. Now, a lot of that stuff, even if you didn't know feng shui, you'd be kind of in the common sense. Right? You would think. You would think. Yeah. I mean, people but, still. But you know what? I can't tell you how many places I've gone to where at the front door they've got the trash cans. Uh, yes, that yeah. was me. I had, I'm like, this is great for recycling. I open the door and I tell you my beer can right in there. I mean, oh, good thing. Oh, good. Oh, perfect. 
But we can improve upon that by maybe making it a little, you know, with a, a nice little fencing around it or something like that to not have that the first thing you see. When Again, think of the risks. That's the best thing. If you want to elevate your feng shui, you got to think how lovely people think. And and remember, feng shui is about, is about power and money. So if you want power and money, you got to think like power and money and act like it. Those are my little tips for the day. Okay. Appreciate that. Mark, again, uh, how do people get a hold of you if they have questions about uh, contracts, uh, real estate, uh, buyers and sellers? Yeah, I'm, I'm helping buyers and sellers all the time here in Marin, and my cell phone is 415-608-1036. My email is mark, M-A-R-K, at H-L-C-R-E. And what do you do for people, let's say, if they're in South San Francisco and they have questions? You know, I, I'm i happy to answer questions. I get a lot of questions from people in the city. Um, oftentimes, they might have a family property. They have a question about a lease, maybe a tenant who's defaulting. I had a question last week uh, from somebody that had a loft in San Francisco, and they were renting their residential property to a dot-com. They wanted just to know what kind of contract to use and were there any special disclosures. Oh. So, you know, that's a question that I'm happy to answer. I have agents who do what I do in the East Bay in San Francisco, and I'm happy to refer them to a, a competent agent. But I specialize in Marin, so I just stick to what I know best. But that, you know, that's a, I yeah. appreciate the honesty on that. Yeah, very good. Thank you both for uh, joining us today. And uh, here's our thoughts for the day: A clear conscience is a, a sure sign of a bad memory. And life is not about how fast you run or how high you climb, but how well you bounce. Way, right? No. <laughs> okay. All right, tune in next week to The Best of Investing. We're going to be giving away more free prizes for answering trivia questions. Thanks for listening. On behalf of our team, I'm Edward Brown. We're wishing you the best of investing. So long. And that's a wrap. All right. Very Thank good. you, Edward. I Thank think you. it's really interesting stuff. Thank it you. is. I mean, <laughs> you know, I had we somebody. Uh, on there. <laughs>